Hello, thank you for tuning in to the DJ Trick channel. Before we get started, hit that like button, please, and subscribe. Hit that bell for me. Come on now, help me out. Help a, help a DJ brother out. So, my name is Patrick from Southern Entertainment. I'm the DJ and Ops Manager from Southern Entertainment DJs. And guess what? We got the EV ZLX 15 right over here and the RCF Art 915. So just kind of kick things off. This is not necessarily like a true comparison. Like, hey, I recommend this one over this one, you know, because uh, they're both in their own respective categories. I probably put this more in the line of beginner DJs and this in the line of uh, DJs who are either upgrading um, the DJs who have newbies or beginners who have plenty of money and who want to start off somewhere good. Then this is for you because they're both, they have their own different sound qualities, right? So, we have a microphone in the back. We got the Sennheiser E835 capturing all of our audio here. I'm using this wireless handheld. It's the XS Sennheiser wireless system and I'm using to capture my vocals and some of that low end punch for a little bit later on for this testing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the deep dive right here into the EV ZLX15. So this is a 1,000 watt speaker. I honestly don't even know how much they are. They're probably around 500 to $600, somewhere in that price range. I could be wrong. Oh well, do your research. That's what we DJs do, we do research, right? So EV ZLX15, 1,000 watts, 127 decibels. The frequency response is 55 hertz to 18 kilohertz. The frequency range is uh, 42 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Enclosure is plastic. It is metal right here for the front with a little that mesh stuff in the back. I'm going to go ahead and tap on this thing. I know I don't recommend doing that, but I just want you to get the idea of you know how sturdy this thing is. It bends. It's bending. It's bending in, and I'm barely pushing on it. All right, so. Keep that in mind when I go to talk about that one, okay? So, over here, I have everything unplugged right now just to show y'all everything. This is has a DSP. That's what makes this a really good beginner DJ speaker because it has that display up here, that digital display right here. So, you can, uh, it has different preset categories for the music. It has like live, speech, music, club that you can just select one of those and it will kind of preset some things and adjust it to those but it also has treble mid and low end that you can also adjust on that end as well uh, you can change this to if you're going to be pairing this up with subs it has um, those cutoff filters on there so you know you've got a, anything under a 80 hertz and above it'll do anything 120 hertz and above this will do and it will leave the 120 hertz and below to the subs okay so we got two combo inputs right here. We got a uh, 3.5 right there, and we have an XLR out. This uh, 3.5 only works, for those who don't know, this 3.5 only works with channel one. These inputs right here uh, for channel one and channel two is mic all the way to the left. All the way to the left is mic, and then once you get to 12 o'clock, it's dead center, and then it goes all up to line level. Um, always just leave it at 12 o'clock. And like I said, this one right here that controls all the settings and everything, but that is your master knob. And it has a handle on top, it has a handle right here, and it has one handle on the side right over there. Next, if for those DJs who love to stick things on top, if you're going to stick something on top of this, you better tape it down because this thing is smooth. This thing is super smooth, and it is angled. So anything on there, once this thing's uh, pumping whatever's on top will vibrate and fall off um, but there are handles like I said on top that you can mount stuff to the top side of it so now we're gonna go all the way over here to the RCF art 915s so it's a 2100 watt amp on the back it's a class D amp it has a high horn of 1.75 inches and it has a woofer of 2.5 that is confirmed uh, I saw on the spec sheet. Uh, now, 131 decibels on this one. Now, remember how I said 127 on this one, right? This 131 was measured for the nerds out there. I'm a nerd a little bit myself. For the nerds out there, don't take offense, was measured at one meter. So the 131 was at one meter. And 
I forgot to uh, mention the, the dispersion rate of the sound. This is 90 by 60 on this one. The RCF is 100 by 60, so it's a little bit further wi wide out angle, which is perfect for this kind of setup anyways. So right here, I want you to hear this. I am pushing on it. I am pushing on it, and it is not flexing at all. It's not bowing. It's not anything. This is real still right here, if I got it right. It's actually still. Uh, I, I know there's, there's all kind of metal components. I don't know what this one is. It's whatever this is, I know I've had to take a lot of dings and a lot of dents out of this. I've spray painted this bad boy so much, I don't think you even get down to the bare metal anymore because I've done so much repairs on that one. But this one right here... Absolutely awesome. I've, ha I've owned this speaker for two months and it's been phenomenal. Not one ding, one dent on it. It does matter about how well you take care of them. But in general, just loading in and out of a car, you should not be able to get a ding or dent on them like you do on this one. So that's just, that's one thing I don't like. Um, it is a plastic enclosure right here. It has one handle there. Right here, these little, that's meant for mounting purposes so you can mount stuff to it and, you know, put it on a ceiling or whatever. It has, this is a handle, although there's no, like, loop on this one, like a little hole where you can, like, fully grab it, you know. You don't really need it uh, on this one, but it, there is a handle. And there's a handle on the other side. There's a handle on top. And this is not as angled as bad. I think it's actually perfectly flat. So this has a combo input, uh, just one. This has one XLR out. There's no extra inputs. It's just one combo input, one out. Um, there's no DSP on here. Obviously, this amp looks really nice. Uh, and there is no mic level. It's just line level. So everything that comes into this is line level. The So if you remember how I said this one has all those settings, preset settings and stuff like that, this one only has three. There is a linear, so you just press it once. There's just a button here, you press it once. It's linear, press it again, it's on boost, and press it again, it's on stage. Uh, stage is meant for for the monitor, monitor setting. So if it's on the floor and you got a band, put it on stage mode and you're good. Uh, if you need, if you're mainly doing like a lot of vocals, if you're not really needing like a whole lot of music. So if you're doing like um like an outdoor event or something like that, and you're mainly just having a lot of mics and stuff, you got a lot of speakers or maybe even a corporate event that doesn't have any dancing or something like that, like they're doing like um, like a seminar or something like that, linear mode is what this is for. And speech is on this one. Um, the boost mode on this one is like the club mode on this one. Um, club mode just provides more low-end punch. Boost mode provides more low-end punch as well. So with that being said, the weight, the weight of the two. This is 49 pounds. This thing is heavy. You can most definitely feel the quality in here you pick it up. This one right here, I think it's 37 pounds, maybe 42. I'm pretty sure it's 37 pounds. Um, either way, this thing is super light compared to this one right here, but you can feel the quality in this one. Uh, like I said, 2,100 watts, 131 decibels, 1,000 watts, 127 decibels. So I'm going to go back there right now. I have everything set to uh, flatline on this one, on the EV, and I have everything flatline. Well, there's no flatline. It's just linear mode on this speaker. So I'm not trying to emphasize on the low end punch right now. This is just regular flatline. I have a Behringer X32 compact mixer that is providing all of our sound for today, and it is keeping up with the microphone in the back. Like I said earlier, it is the Sennheiser E835 mic, and I have the XS wireless mic right here. So I'm going to head back there right now, and I want you to tell me what you think. So if you see red, that's the EVZLX. If you see blue, that is the RCF ART915. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off with some good music over here. Put those headphones on if you... Don't have them on. If you see white like it is right now, that means that it is both of them playing.
now that you've had the chance to hear that, drop a comment down right now. Tell me what you thought. If you didn't have headphones on, I highly suggest throwing those on and listening to this again. And yeah, tell me what you thought about the EV ZLX15 right here. Like I said, it was on just regular music mode, flat line. I wasn't emphasizing any particular part of the frequencies, all flat line. Same thing with this one. This was on linear mode, so I wasn't emphasizing on anything. The first thing that I took away with was whenever this finally kind of got loud, uh, it was, it was kind of all in my face, and it wasn't that clean. Um, the low end, which is not supposed to be extremely noticeable in the setting that we're running it on it was there but not there almost to some sense like for some of those djs who know what i'm talking about it's like you hear it and it's there but it's not enough to like oh wow that's pretty good for that that setting right there you know and especially for talking and stuff like that so if you're using this setting for talking purposes and stuff like that like i am talking over the mic then maybe so you know that might be okay uh this one right over here sounded phenomenal it, it it was crisp it was clean i could hear the distinctive between all the frequencies on this one i hope you could on the mic uh that i'm using back there and if you're using headphones uh this just sounded just out the gate it was just warm to my ears it was it was crisp it was clean it wasn't so all in my face like this one was and i loved it so now we're going to go ahead and crank this thing up to club mode on this one and boost mode on this one if you don't remember if you're just now tuning in uh club mode and boost mode on this are essentially the same modes all it does is provide extra low end punch so we're going to go back there we're going to leave our mixer flat lined so whatever low end punch is pushing is because that's what the speaker is doing itself it's not because i'm adding it from the mixer all right in a large venue of 100 people and up bring one sub at least a 15 inch sub i use qsc 18 subs so i know i'm gonna get good sound by using just one of those with two of these evzlx 15s uh, once you get around 170 people you're going to want a second sub for these things uh, the problem that i've had with these is that uh, for example for a wedding because i'm doing a lot of weddings right now 
Uh, if you're already been using these for cocktail hour inside the venue, obviously there's a cocktail hour outside that you're running on a separate system, a separate speaker. But inside, if you're using these cocktail hour, dinner portion, uh, you've already got through your dances, you know, whatever. Now it's open floor dancing. And you're 30 minutes into that open dance floor. If you're like me, you kind of push these close to the limit. And yeah, the low end just, you kind of start to lose it. It gets very muddy. It's not very clean. It's not as punchy and on point as much. It just like you kind of softly hear it, you know, and, and that's not good. You want to be able to define that low end punch between each beat. That's, that's the point of that, right? So this will not do that after so long. Read any Reddit form, read whatever you want. You will see it out there that that is known about this speaker. So for for the beginners, don't let that deter you from this. This is still a great speaker. It will still get the job done, but it's not necessarily a catch-all speaker for everything. This one right here, the RCF Art 915s, this has been phenomenal. Uh, actually, I can say it's probably too much in those smaller venues, but luckily for me, I know what I'm doing, and I just cut it down. But a lot of people, a lot of DJs just like to crank it up and blast it full, full throttle and go crazy. I've never hit limit on these though. These sound so good out the gate. It's so warm the whole entire time. Uh, you don't lose any quality on that low end punch whatsoever. It just stays there the whole entire night. And I, I have never had any issues with this one. I haven't had it get muddy. I haven't had the highs get so high that it's just unclean or anything like that. The vocals are amazing. Whenever I'm going over the mic, I could actually, I, I've actually had people say that I was too loud with these and I'm running this at a lower volume than I traditionally were with these. And the difference is because the high horn is 1.75 inches. It's almost two inches up there. So it can really reproduce the vocals very well and throw it very far, which is one of the reasons why I got this, because I do a, a lot of outdoor events, national night outs, you name it, street festivals. These things will throw that sound very far and the low end, it throws it just as just as good as the high end. Check out Nick Spinelli's video on the Art 932. He does that video in the middle of a field. And it was absolutely, I was impressed. I watched that before I bought these right here because I knew that these were a little bit bigger. Yes, they're not the 935s, but either way, that's not the point. The thing is, they throw very far. And they do a great job at it. I have pushed these without a sub up to 175 people. And it was phenomenal it still sounded really good now do i suggest that no not all the time i do if i am going to push that much usually lately i've been using just one sub uh one qsc sub uh when i'm using two of these art 915s and if it's 200 then i'm going to be using two of the subs but other than that this is a fantastic catch-all speaker for those who are looking to have well I have more than one system, but for those who are looking, who can only afford one system right now, the best catch-all. I, I promise you, it will do everything from a small little venue with just one speaker, to, it sounds like you got a sub, to doing a very large open venue, to where it doesn't sound like you have a sub, but you most definitely can t still tell that there's a lot of low-end punch. Uh, but other than that, that is it. Um, if you're looking to upgrade, this right here is it. They, they sound amazing with some subs. Uh, kind of. But if you're a beginner and you don't have the money to get these, go with these. Just go with these. Um, the second best to these, in my opinion, is the LD Icoa 15s. I haven't ever owned a pair. I've heard a pair of them, and they sound phenomenal. The, the low end on those, I think, sound better on the Icoa 15s than these right here, than the ZLX 15s. And I do want to set the record straight on one thing, because I know somebody, if you haven't already done it now, somebody's going to do it. If you are going to run a sub, subsystem, and I recommend before buying 15s, if you have plenty of money, and if you only are going to, do, to be doing a specific kind of event where you're always using subs, I recommend getting 12 tops and then a 15 bottoms or 18 bottoms. just depends on how much low end throw you want and how much fill you want in that room. Here, if you are going to go with some tops, the ZLX 15 tops and the E, I think it's called the ELX 200. 
uh, there's 15 subs for those, and they have an 18 sub for those. That line and up are really the only subs I recommend out of the uh, EV uh, subs. But other than that, 12 tops, 15 or 18 bottoms for the subs if you can go that route. Uh, but if not, uh, and if money is a thing, LD Icoa 12, LD Icoa 15, and then the LD, I think it's called Icoa 18, that specifically is the sub. That's the way to go if you're on a budget and you need all that extra stuff. But other than that, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, apologize, I got a little bit worried. This is my first one right here, really doing a comparison like this and kind of going out there on the web. And hopefully I'll pick up some more tips and tricks off all the other podcasts and I'll get a little bit better. But thank y'all for watching this video. I hope y'all are having a, if you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, even, don't matter what time you have it. Have a great day. Have a fantastic time. If you're a DJ and you're about to, have, about to have an event come up and everything like that, have a good old time out there at your event. Don't don't let speakers be what stops you, okay? Don't be like, oh, man, I really want the RCFs and I can't get the RCFs right now. Don't let that stop you. Be the DJ that you are. Be who you are. What got you to where you're at right now because that's what's going to get you further down that road. All right? Thank you all for checking me out.